Lindsay from RX Duo. Christian's with us today too. We're going to talk to Brent about the new surviving sepsis campaign guidelines. Okay, Brent, what do you think the major differences are between the 2016 and 2012 guideline? I think one of the major differences has to do with initial fluid resuscitation. So in the 2012 guidelines, they had a specific protocolized approach, and we're talking about early goal-directed therapy here, to reach specific targets, such as a CVP, a central venous pressure, of 8 to 12 millimeters of mercury, and then they discussed central venous oxygen saturations, as well as specific targets for urine output. In these new updated guidelines, those targets have been removed. Now this has to do with the results of three important trials that were in New England Journal of Medicine and published in 2014. So those three trials are the PROMISE, PROCESS, and the RISE trials. So what those trials showed us is that the protocolized approach, the early goal-directed therapy that was first initially studied all the way back in 2001, also known as the RIVERS trial, that the reduction mortality basically could not be reproduced. It's not that there was extra harm with that approach, so it could still be used. It's just that they didn't find the decreased mortality benefit from it. The next big difference has to do with antimicrobial therapy. So with the new updated guidelines, there is a new statement added that daily assessment should be utilized to see if antibiotics should be de-escalated. And then they also make mention to procalcitonin levels. So there are two separate recommendations. One has to do with utilizing procalcitonin levels in order to shorten duration of antimicrobial therapy, and also procalcitonin levels can be utilized to discontinue empiric therapy. The next main difference has to do with source control. So the 2012 guidelines made reference that intervention should be made within 12 hours for source control, but the updated guidelines really discuss that interventions should be made as soon as possible. Another difference with the updated guidelines has to do with fluid therapy. So there's one extra line in the updated guidelines that makes reference to crystalloids being preferred over gelatins. So gelatins are synthetic colloids and with the low quality of evidence and the cost consideration with them, they really could not be recommended over crystalloids. The last main difference with the updated guidelines have to do with mechanical ventilation. So the updated guidelines make reference to the fact that they recommend against the use of high oscillatory ventilation in patients with sepsis-induced ARDS, as well as they make no recommendation for non-invasive ventilation in patients with sepsis-induced ARDS. So Brent, what do you think some of the key takeaway points are for the clinical pharmacists out there? I think one of the important key takeaways for a pharmacist that is involved with treating a patient with sepsis is with antimicrobial therapy. So the new guidelines make reference to utilizing accepted pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profiles of the antimicrobials used. So within the rationale portion of the guidelines, they discuss utilizing loading doses of vancomycin, so make sure you're dosing your antibiotics appropriately, and that's with actual body weight with vancomycin, so you can achieve those therapeutic levels appropriately and achieve the highest penetration possible into tissues, as well as other factors to consider when you're dosing other antibiotics such as beta-lactams or even utilizing an extended infusion approach with piperacillin tazobactam. What's important to know with that is that initial loading doses should be utilized prior to starting the extended infusion interval protocol with the piperacillin tazobactam. Anything else we should know? Some other key things to consider when treating a patient with sepsis is that early recognition is always important. Patients are going to require massive fluid resuscitation, so utilizing crystalloids. These new updated guidelines cannot give preference to which crystalloids are recommended over another. Corticosteroids should be utilized in patients that are refractory to fluids as well as vasopressors, so specifically IV hydrocortisone. And then also definitely consider, and this is always something you should consider in critically ill patients, is venous thromboembolism prophylaxis, where the new guidelines 
prefer utilizing low molecular weight heparin over unfractionated heparin, as well as stress also prophylaxis, where the updated guidelines discuss either using a proton pump inhibitor or a histamine 2 receptor antagonist. All right, do you think that's everything? I think those are some of the key points. One last thing, with antimicrobial therapy, IV antimicrobial therapy, appropriate therapy, should be administered as soon as possible after recognition of sepsis or septic shock, and definitely within one hour. Great, thank you, Brent. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe.